like I said, I'm giving you this for free, okay? It's an unusual function. I'm asking the same question. What's the maximum? What's the minimum? Okay? Now, when you have a look at this, I'm in a restricted domain. Okay? Here I've given you the derivative, right? So you remember the first thing we went for was tell me where the stationary points are. Uh, the potential turning points, rather. Where are the potential turning points here? Minus 3 and 1. Minus 3 and 1. However, when you look at the restricted domain, negative 3 is outside of the domain I'm interested in. So I reject that. Okay? So the only relevant turning point occurs at x equals 1. Are you okay with that? And you I'm just going to ignore the other one. Okay? I'm kind of playing a little fast okay. and loose at the moment. I just want to get the picture to you because once we get the picture, you'll see something very unusual. Okay? <laughs> now, I'm going to do my table of values now. Okay? But something unusual comes out when we do this. Okay? Um, how many columns am I going to need? Well, I'm comparing x against y. I know I've got to test the endpoints. My left endpoint is 0. I've got a stationary point at 1. But then, I don't have an endpoint on the right-hand side. It just goes on forever. Okay? Now, that's kind of weird, but I can understand what's going on, and I'm still going to leave a box for it, as you'll see why in a second. Okay? Have a look at this function. Let's go back into curve sketching mode. Right? What can you tell me about this function and its extremities? It like kind of it's an it's a problem. It, it becomes zero. zero. What what kind of it has a it has a horizontal asymptote, right? The way I know it has a horizontal asymptote is because the degree at the bottom is bigger than the degree at the top. So as I go to really really huge x, this denominator is going to get enormous, right? And so I'm approaching zero. Yes. So what I'm going to put here because it don't it doesn't have an endpoint. It does though have a behavior that it does as I go further and further and further, okay? So that's important to me. That will factor into my maximum or my minimum. Okay? All right, so some values, right? When I put x equals 0 in, just have a look at the numbers. x equals 0, that's One 0, third. that's 0. It's a third, okay? Again, because it's pretty simple, when you put in 1, you're getting 1 plus 1 and 1 plus 3. That's 2 over 4, which is a half, okay? And you guys already told me that... Um, this limit, as I approach infinity, is zero. Okay, now before we draw some conclusions, I want a picture. I want a picture, right? What does this thing look like? Pause for a second. I haven't done the second derivative. I haven't done table of values for the first derivative either. But I already know what kind of stationary point this is. What kind of stationary point is it? Can you see how I argue, I reason that it's a maximum. Because look, look, start to draw the picture, right? At x equals 0, you're at a third. At x equals 1, you've got a stationary point up at a half. And then as x approaches infinity, you're going towards y equals 0, okay? That had better be the top, right? I can't, that can't be the bottom, I'm, there's nothing up here, right? So therefore, this is my graph, okay? Simple enough. Now let's answer the question. Easy one first. What's the maximum? Half. The maximum is a half. It occurs at x equals 1. Let's just quickly write that down. Okay. But now when we ask the question, what's the minimum, we kind of run into a problem. Okay. What's the obvious like first thing that you would say? Limit x approaches infinity. You you would say zero is the lowest, right? Because look, I, like that's the I can't I can't go below that certainly. So that's a minimum, right? Except for the problem, just like when I said, okay, for a point of inflection, you need to have a point, right? You can't have out of discontinuity. You can't say, oh, there I am, because it's discontinuous. Now, when do I get to y equals zero? And the answer is I don't ever get there. Right? There's no turning point, which means I wiggle up from the bottom. Okay? I'm never going to get to zero. So I can't say zero is my minimum. So therefore you say, okay, well, it's something above zero. Right? We'll pick a number. 0.01. 0 0.01. 0 .01. Well, guess what? <laughs> I can get closer. I can get lower than that. I can get 0 0.001 or 0 0.0001 or any, because it's asymptotic, any arbitrarily small value just above zero. Right? Now being that I can't, I can't say it's that number, and I also can't say it's zero. 
I can't say it's anything. There is no minimum. Because by definition, the minimum is a number, right? But there is no number that actually satisfies the description of the minimum. Can't be zero, because you can't get there. It can't be any number above zero, because you'll always be able to get lower than it, right? Just like when my son asks me, Daddy, what's the biggest number? Is it a hundred? And I'm like, hundred <laughs> ones bigger. And he's like, what about a hundred hundreds? He, he doesn't know about thousands and millions yet. And I'm like, a hundred hundreds and one? And he's like, wow, you can always think of a bigger number. Well, in reverse, whatever number you supply me, so long as it's positive, I will always be able to pick a smaller number. So there is no number, there's no minimum. Well, 